Good morning, on what is, I hope, a nice day by the time you see this. I'd like to start by reading Psalm 113, and you might want to say it or pray it along with me, and the words will appear on the screen. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I bear pain in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all day long? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Give light to my eyes, or I shall sleep the sleep of death. And my enemy will say, I have prevailed. My foes will rejoice because I am shaken. But I trusted in your steadfast love, and my heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing of the Lord, because he has dealt bountifully with me. Now, have you noticed that the world seems to be going to hell in a handcart? It's an odd expression, which I wrote down without even thinking about it, so I thought I should look it up. And the expression owes its origins to a stained glass window in Fairfield Church in Gloucestershire, which was installed some time before 1517. And it shows the Day of Judgment. And it shows the innocent going to heaven and the guilty going to hell. And among the latter is an old woman in a wheelbarrow being pushed to her doom by a dead blue devil. Over the centuries, the expression going to hell in a wheelbarrow changed to the one that we know, going to hell in a handcart. But whether in the old or the new version, it's been around for a good 500 years. And the expression means that someone or something is on an inevitable path to utter ruin or failure. Matters are getting worse and worse and there is no hope of stopping the decline. And when you look around the world, that seems to be the case. The think tank Freedom House reports that as a result of COVID-19, some 80 countries have become less democratic or have abused human rights. That around the world, dictatorships have grown nastier and standards have slipped in many democracies. The Chinese government has put all its Muslim Uyghur citizens into internment camps, seemingly in an attempt to eradicate their faith. The Indian Prime Minister treats Muslims as if they are not really citizens. The President of the Philippines urges the murder of criminal suspects. Suspects, mind you, not people convicted. Hungary's Prime Minister crushes democratic institutions like the press and the judiciary and claims that his opponents are all part of a Jewish plot. There are a great many other examples which you could look up on the Freedom House website, which will appear now on the screen. But with everyone's attention on COVID-19, autocrats and would-be autocrats in many countries are doing all sorts of bad things, safe in the knowledge that the rest of the world will barely notice, let alone object. For instance, in Egypt, under the cover of the pandemic, the government have just executed 15 political prisoners in a single weekend. But there seems to be another pandemic which is encircling, encircling the globe, a pandemic of irrationality. In many countries, people are denying the existence of COVID-19. They claim that it's a plot to allow the government to take over, and they make nonsensical claims such as the rise, rise in cases is due to a rise in testing. Lockdowns don't work. People aren't dying. It's just a bad flu. Or that Bill Gates, the Microsoft co-founder, was responsible for the COVID-19 pandemic. Madness abounds in the world. And global warming, which we are all beginning to suffer from, is also denied by many people, most notably by, by America's worst, sorry, first citizen, President Trump. Yet, we are already living with the consequences. 
As sea levels rise, Pacific islands are disappearing under the sea. The island of St. Kitts and Nevis in the Caribbean has lost more than a quarter of its landmass. In the Marshall Islands, the underground fresh water supply has already been contaminated by incoming seawater. The Nile Delta is turning into salt marsh as the sea expands and hurricanes are becoming more intense and more dangerous and fires and floods are becoming more severe and more regular. Climate change from global, global, global warming is not something that will happen. It's happening now. And along with irrationality, right-wing fascism seems to be growing. Um, and you can look up evidence for, the, for that yourself on the web. But in the UK, we have a government which seems hell-bent on getting rid of the laws which permit people to challenge their actions and hell-bent on attacking the judges and lawyers who hold them to account. Both actions threaten our democracies. And nearer to home, as it were, we belong to a church caught up in a crisis of abuse by clergy and by other leaders. And after all that, we are still beset by the COVID-19 pandemic with increasing deaths and the likelihood of massive employment. Right, enough. I am completely disheartened and downcast. Well, I am, but I know that I will not remain like that. Like the psalmist, I recognise the fact that for many, if not at the moment for me, life is full of suffering and there is much to be depressed and anxious about, but my hope is in God. The daily church readings this week are ploughing through Paul's letter to the Philippians. Just one verse. I am quite confident that the one who began a good work in you will go on completing it until the day of Jesus Christ comes. Paul constantly seems to ooze confidence. He is confident that the love we are called to practice will not go to waste, confident that prayer will be answered, confident that whatever happens God is in control. And like Paul and the psalmist, I continue to hope and trust in God and in his goodness, even in the midst of evil and suffering. That in the end, God is in control. We will not escape pain and misery and suffering and despair, but we can rise above them and continue to hope in God. In any case, as someone wrote, despair is a desperate companion for facing the unknown. So, a prayer. Lord, make each moment of our lives a wonder. Strengthen us in our faith. Give us hope when all things seem hopeless. Give us love for the unlovable and peace where no peace could be. Make us gamble everything on your love and mercy and to dare everything in your great service. In Jesus' name. Amen. And if you have been, thank you for watching and reflecting with me. Trust in God and have a good day.